Hi, I'm Mike, founder of GoodBed.com. Today we're gonna to take a close look at the DreamCloud mattress. Now, this is the entry-level model in what is now a three-model collection from DreamCloud, a sister brand of Nectar, which is another mattress brand you may have heard of. Now, we've already reviewed another mattress model in this collection, which is now called the DreamCloud Premier. So we're excited to give you our first look at this DreamCloud entry-level mattress. Stick around. Now, in case you've never seen one of our videos before or been to our website, goodbed.com, the number one thing you need to know when shopping for a mattress is that mattresses are highly personal. This means that a mattress that's great for me could be truly terrible for you and vice versa. So the things you need to focus on as a mattress shopper are what we call the three Fs, fit, feel, and features. Fit is about finding a mattress that fits your body in terms of your weight, your shape, and your preferred sleep positions, much like picking out a pair of pants. Feel is the things that are not better or worse on a universal sense, they could only be better or worse for your personal preferences. And features are things that can be better or worse, but may or may not be a priority for you personally. This is how we do all of our testing and it's also how we organize all of our reviews. So let's start with fit, since that's really the most important of the three Fs, since it's what determines whether you get the two things everybody has to get from their mattress, proper spinal alignment and adequate pressure relief. In terms of spinal alignment, we found that this is going to be a pretty good fit for a wide range of sleepers. Overall, we would say that side sleepers, stomach sleepers, and back sleepers can find a good match on this mattress. That being said, we found it to be a little bit better among side sleepers for heavier side sleepers than for lighter side sleepers. There's not quite enough softness for a side sleeper to get the conformance they need if they're really light. It's still pretty good, don't get me wrong, it's not, it's not bad, but I think as you get a little heavier, you'll find a little bit better spinal alignment as a side sleeper on this mattress. For back sleepers, we found it was pretty consistent across the board here. Probably the lightest and the heaviest may not have quite as good as those in the middle in terms of the, the right alignment for a back sleeper. And then for stomach sleepers, we overall found this is great for lighter stomach sleepers. Maybe there's a little too many cushioning layers here, a little too much give for the heaviest of stomach sleepers. So that might be the one area from a spinal alignment standpoint we'd have the most concern is the heaviest stomach sleepers. From a pressure release standpoint, we found it to be pretty good to good across the board, but probably a little better in general for side sleepers. Like with many mattresses, the further you get into the mattress, the less pressure relief you get. So the heavier side sleepers are likely to get not quite as good pressure relief as the lighter side sleepers. So now let's get into feel. And again, these are the things that can't be universally better or worse. They can only be better or worse for your personal preferences. The first of these is softness. And in this case, we would describe the dream cloud as a medium firm on our softness spectrum, meaning uh, the category just to the firmer side of medium. That being said, it's on the firm end of that category. So it's pretty close to being what we'd call a firm, but it just makes the cut for what we call, you know, slides on the medium firm side of that line. Um, in general, sometimes mattresses achieve their softness level through kind of a, a disparate levels of softness at the top of the mattress. You know, sometimes they have a really soft quilt, something firmer underneath that nets out to a medium firm. In this case, it's kind of a, you know, relatively, medium firmy uh, top one or two inches with something similar kind of uh, below that in the next one or two inches. So it's kind of a consistent feel there that gets you to that, that, that overall softness level of just on the uh, firm end of medium firm. In terms of the cushioning depth, that's the difference between sort of sleeping in your mattress or sleeping on your mattress. Getting that hugged or cradled sensation versus getting a floating above your mattress sensation. And in this case, we would describe this as pretty much right down the middle in this category. Now, I would say that the amount that you sink into the mattress, like when you're lying on your back, is probably about average, maybe even a smidge less. But of course, the amount of conformance you get is another factor here, like when you're lying on your side, how well does it conform to your pointy parts? That was a little bit more than average. So in general, it just kind of comes out right in the middle and you get a bit of a cross between that hug or cradled sensation and floating above it. In terms of the amount of memory feel, there is memory foam in this mattress. We noticed it a lot more in terms of the delayed recovery. You know, there's a little bit of a of a delay when you get off the mattress or you move away from a spot, you'll see it kind of slowly recover. 
we noticed it a little bit more than that in that way than we did in terms of the delayed responsiveness as you're sinking into the mattress. So recognizing that the majority of mattresses today do have some amount of memory foam, we would probably say that this mattress has about an average amount of that slow melting memory feel. Now turning to bounce, which is the last of the feel characteristics, uh, we would say this is a mattress that definitely has an above average level of bounce, but it's kind of a mix. We, look, we test this in a few different ways. Certainly, if you plop your full weight down on the mattress, that's what we call deep bounce, you're gonna get a, a fair amount of, of bounce that way. Likewise, if you drop a bowling ball, that's what we call the mid-level bounce test. That also delivers a fair amount of bounce, but the one area where you don't get a lot of bounce is right up at the surface. There's just not, you know, those foams at the top of the mattress, as I mentioned, they're firmer, there's some memory foam in there. They don't have a lot of bounce. So, but on balance though, we'd still say that this is a mattress with an above average amount of bounce. So now let's get into the third F features, which again, these are the things that can be better or worse, but may or may not be a priority for you personally. The first of these is motion isolation, which is basically the ability of a mattress to protect you on this side of the mattress from motion and disturbances that's happening over on the other side of the mattress. So in this case, we found that the Dream Cloud has excellent motion isolation. We test this a few different ways, both with dropping a bowling ball on the mattress, as well as me, plopping my full 200 pounds down on the mattress. And in both cases, the Dream Cloud did very well. The next feature is temperature, which is the ability of a mattress to keep you cool during the night or keep you from overheating, which can be a big priority for some people. And in the case of the Dream Cloud, we found that this is not a mattress that has a lot of specific features in this regard per se. That being said, its inherent construction does offer a lot of positives in this respect, namely in the area of airflow, which really is the most important consideration when you're looking for a mattress that can help, that can help keep you cool. Because obviously the heat that comes from your body into the mattress is gonna try to escape if it can. If, it, if there's anywhere for it to go, if there's airflow going through this mattress, it will escape. So in the case of the Dream Cloud, it's not only an inner spring mattress, it actually has coils going edge to edge. There's no foam perimeter here. So really, when you talk about everything below the top, say, four inches of this mattress, it's pretty much 99% air. So this, there's gonna be a lot of airflow in this mattress, and that's gonna help in this area. In terms of other considerations related to this, I mean, we talked about how it's not a mattress that you're gonna sink super deeply into, or it's gonna conform you know, really close to your body, uh, which is another way that heat can get trapped near you. So that won't really be such a concern either. So on balance, we'd say that the, the Dream Cloud mattress in this area is certainly good. The next feature is edge support. And this is an area where the Dream Cloud mattress does have uh, some particular features to help. And specifically, it's got some stronger coils going around the perimeter of the mattress to give it a bit of a stronger edge. Uh, you can see I'm sitting on the edge of the mattress right now. That's one of the ways that we test edge support. The other way is me lying on the edge of the mattress. And in both respects, we found the edge support maybe wasn't quite the best that we see, but overall, certainly good. The next feature is the ease of repositioning, which for some people can be a really big concern, particularly with a mattress that has some memory foam like this one. Uh, in the case of the Dream Cloud, even though this is a little bit of a firmer mattress, and it doesn't have so much memory feel, we did find that the memory foam that's in this mattress, it impedes your movement a little bit. On, on balance, I would say the ease of repositioning here is good, but maybe not as good as some mattresses that have a little bit less memory foam in them. The next area of features is the use of natural materials in the mattress, which for many people really boils down more to just the lack of harmful chemicals. So as it relates to the former, I wanna start by saying this is not a natural mattress. It really doesn't contain any natural materials per se, apart from some cashmere in the cover. So if a natural or organic mattress is what you're looking for, there are certainly many better options for you in this regard. That being said, if it's really more about the lack of harmful chemicals that, you're, that is a concern for you, then there are a couple of things about this mattress that I think you can take some reassurance from, starting with the fact that by volume, this is mostly air, right? You've got a steel mattress, including even the edge support is steel, and therefore that's a material, obviously steel, that doesn't off-gas and doesn't contain harmful chemicals. So th I think that's something you can certainly take some reassurance from. And then as it re relates to the foam used in this mattress, 
It is all certified to the CertiPure standard, which is essentially a standard that looks for both the presence of and off-gassing of various harmful materials and certifies that neither are present beyond some minimally acceptable threshold. And you know, for what it's worth, when we open to this mattress, we obviously, when we open every mattress, we do a quick kind of smell test to gauge the degree of off-gassing that we're experiencing. This one was, was I think, less than average. And here we are just, you know, a, a few days after we've opened it, and it's really barely perceptible, even when I put my nose right up to the mattress. So again, for what that's worth, I think those are some things you can take some reassurance from in this area. The last feature is adjustable base compatibility, which is important for more and more people these days as adjustable bases grow in popularity. And in this area, we look at three things. Number one is, first of all, is it gonna damage the mattress in any way or invalidate your warranty or something like that? In this case, the answer is no. This is a mattress that certainly is intended to be used on an adjustable base. In fact, DreamCloud sells an adjustable base that this mattress is sitting on right now. Uh, and so this is not going to be a problem in either of those respects. The second thing we look at is how well does it conform to the curves of the base, particularly when the base is in its fully elevated position. And in this case, we found that it, it conformed okay. So when I was, I was sitting on one side of the mattress, that side of the mattress conformed fine. Uh, however, the other side of the mattress, when no one was on it as I elevated the base, it tended to lift off. It just didn't want to conform so well. It wanted to stay flat. So this is the type of thing that does improve over time as the mattress breaks in and as it gets used on an adjustable base more and more. However, we want to mention that out of the box is not going to do as well as some mattresses in that area. The third thing we look at is, does anything weird happen when you put it on an adjustable base, particularly again, in that fully elevated position? We look for things like the bowing of the side panel. In this case, um, the side panel itself, the fabric, did bow out a little bit, but really that was just a cosmetic thing. The, uh, there was no uh, bowing of the underlying edge support, for example. Sometimes a foam perimeter can stick out. That doesn't happen here. There's no foam perimeter. So overall, not a big concern there. The only real concern we had in this case was that this is a, about a one inch quilt. And when you get into that fully elevated position, the quilt just kind of bunches up. And so if you're sitting on the mattress when you fully elevate it, it's really not something you're gonna feel. But if you weren't on the mattress and then you get on it once it's been elevated, it's gonna feel a little lumpy under your rear end. So again, that's just a small, uh, a small factor in this consideration. And on balance, I guess we would say that the DreamCloud is, is pretty good in terms of adjustable base compatibility. All right, now that we've covered the three Fs, three other things that are gonna be important anytime you're buying a mattress are delivery, return policy, and warranty. In terms of delivery, if you're buying this mattress directly from DreamCloud, like through their website, they're gonna offer you free delivery to your doorstep. And from there, you're gonna be on your own to get it into your bedroom, unbox it, et cetera. Now, uh, this is a mattress, the box weighed about 100 pounds in a queen size. Uh, so two person job, certainly to move that box around. I was able to do the unboxing pretty much myself, uh, but some people might want to have a second person around for that part as well. If all that seems a little overwhelming, DreamCloud does offer a white glove delivery for $149 extra. And in that case, they'll also take away your old mattress as well as all the packaging. Uh, and do all the setup and stuff for you. In terms of return policy, again, it's gonna vary depending on where you buy this mattress, but if you buy it directly from DreamCloud, they're gonna offer you a 365 day in-home trial. So that's a return policy, it means that you can return it anytime in that first year for a full refund if you aren't satisfied for any reason. That being said, they do want you to keep the mattress for 30 days just to give your body a chance to adjust to it. Uh, out of the gates. In terms of the warranty, DreamCloud offers what they call a forever warranty. But before we get into how that works, the number one factor you need to look for in a mattress warranty is not how long it is, but rather what they define to be an allowable dip, meaning how deep does a sag or body impression have to be before they consider it to be a warranty defect. And in the case of the DreamCloud, the answer is an inch and a half, which is basically industry standard for a mattress like this, I mean, meaning a inner spring mattress or a hybrid mattress. So I'd say this warranty is pretty solid on that front. Now, in terms of how the forever warranty works, basically for the first 10 years, if you have any kind of warranty defect, they'll fully replace your mattress with one of equal or greater value uh, free of charge. 
So super simple. Beyond that, really, it's, it's still pretty simple. There's only two things that change. Number one is they have the option to repair the mattress if they want rather than replace it. Uh, and number two is they say you might be charged a $50 fee in terms of transporting the mattress to them to evaluate it. And th but they might waive that fee if they determine that it's a valid claim. So that's the only real differences here in, in that uh, second category goes literally from 10 years to forever. So overall, I think there's a lot to like about the warranty here. Now let's take a quick look at what's actually inside a DreamCloud mattress. But before we get to that, let's start with the cover, which actually has some cashmere in the fabric. So worth noting, it's not the entire thing is not all cashmere, but some minority of the fibers used in this cover fabric is cashmere. And one other thing I'd note about this cover is that on the side panels, it does have uh, two handles on each side, which we did find quite handy in terms of moving this mattress around. Underneath the cover is actually some foam that's actually stitched in, quilted into the cover, gives the mattress this kind of billowy uh, uh, feel at the very top. Uh, it's about an inch and a half of 1.5 density foam that they've got quilted into this cover. One thing I wanna point out about the cover, by the way, is you may notice in this video, there's a little bit of kind of bunching of the cover. It makes the mattress look lumpy. It doesn't feel lumpy. It's just kind of on the model we happen to get. It's just got maybe a smidge too much quilt cover material here uh, more than it needs. So it's a little bit of a, of a bubble there, but you don't feel it at all when you're on the mattress. Uh, now underneath the cover and the quilt, if we open this up here, you can see there are four more layers of this mattress. Uh, you've got this one inch layer of gel memory foam. And this is a pretty soft gel memory foam. Uh, you can see it's definitely got, you know, some slow responsiveness to it that you'd expect from memory foam. You can see the gel flex in there. Uh, it also has uh, a two and a half inch transition layer below that of polyurethane foam. This gel memory foam, by the way, is a two and a half pound density. This transition layer is a 1.7 pound density. One thing that's interesting, the combination of these two is because they're glued together, it actually kind of seems to add a little bit more memory feel than you'd expect to have from just one inch of gel memory foam on its own because it takes a little longer for that uh, gel memory foam to drag that transition layer up with it as it's recovering. So that's this four inches of foam here at the top right below the quilt. Then below that, you have an eight inch pocketed coil unit. This is a 768 coil unit with reinforced uh, stronger coils, two rows of them going around the perimeter of the mattress. So that's what you're seeing here. These are those stronger coils. Uh, and then what you have below that is just a one inch uh, foam platform essentially for those coils to rest on. So in total, they call this a 14 inch mattress. It kind of undulates since it's a quilted surface. So think of it as 13 to 14 total inches of mattress. One thing that's important to just about every mattress shopper is value. And this is where we look at what's in the mattress, how long do we think it's going to last, and then how does that all add up relative to the price? In terms of what's in this mattress, you're talking about a hybrid mattress with about five inches of comfort materials on top of a pocketed quilt support unit. It's worth noting that there's really only one layer, uh, one inch of what we consider to be a premium comfort material, which would be that inch of gel memory foam that's sandwiched in between the quilt and the transition layer. Now, in terms of how long we think this is going to last, this is where we turn to foam densities as our best, albeit imperfect, predictor of longevity. And in this case, I would say with respect to each of these three layers, the densities are kind of right on the cusp. They're, they're not so high that I would say that I feel supremely confident that these are not likely to be an issue, but they're not so low that I feel major concerns and, and, and a likelihood that they are going to be an issue. So they're kind of right in between there. And of course, this is just my opinion looking at these numbers. It's not an exact science. Now in terms of price, and I'm not gonna quote prices, exact prices in this video because across the entire industry, prices are changing dramatically right now on account of some supply chain disruption affecting costs in terms of shipping, labor, and raw materials. So uh, the best thing you can do is if you're not watching this video on our website, go to the description of this video and click the link to our website where that we will include in the description that will show you both the latest price as well as the current and best available discount on this product. So be sure to do that. But what I can tell you is that as of right now, 
uh, DreamCloud has kept their prices more constant than other brands. And you could think of that as kind of a relative price reduction in terms of like how it compares to the rest of the market. And so when I look at this product and everything I was just talking about in terms of what's in it and how long we think it's going to last relative to the current price, I would say that the DreamCloud is a pretty good value. Well, let's just sum up some of the things we covered with regards to this DreamCloud mattress. Number one, we talked about how from a spinal alignment standpoint, we think this is gonna be a, a suitable match for a pretty wide range of sleepers, both from a sleep position and a weight standpoint. If we had some concerns, it was with probably the spinal alignment for heavier stomach sleepers on this mattress, where we thought there could be a little too much give, but likewise, spinal alignment for lighter side sleepers. We didn't think there was maybe enough give for the lighter side sleepers. And I guess pressure relief for the heaviest side sleepers as well was, was a concern. If you sink a little too far in, we worried you might not get enough pressure relief. But, but apart from those groups, we felt like a lot of, of uh, folks are gonna find good pressure relief and spinal alignment on this mattress. We talked about how from a feel standpoint, this is what we would classify as a medium firm on our softness spectrum, but it was really towards the firm end of that designation, so almost what we would call a firm. From a cushioning depth standpoint, we thought it was pretty much right in the middle, like a little combination of being a little bit of hugged or cradled sensation, but a little bit of floating above, kind of right in between. Likewise, from a memory feel standpoint, there's only an inch of memory foam in this mattress, so you get a little bit of memory feel, but we classify it as just about an average amount of memory feel. Uh, with the Dream Cloud mattress. And then in terms of bounce, certainly an above average amount of bounce, uh, mostly focused towards the bottom half of the mattress where the springs are. So more of a deep bounce than a surface bounce. We also talked about from a feature standpoint, this is a mattress that has excellent motion isolation. It has also good edge support and what we feel to be good cooling characteristics on account of the airflow through this mattress. So if these criteria sound like a good match for your personal needs, preferences, and priorities, then we really think the Dream Cloud mattress is one that you should consider. So there you have it. We hope you found this video helpful in determining whether the Dream Cloud mattress is the right mattress for you. I do want to urge you though, if you're serious about this mattress, to check out the written version of this review because that's where you'll find a lot more detail on each of these assessments. You can find a link to that if you're not already on our website while you're watching this. You can find a link to that right in the description of this video. And if after that you're still not sure whether this is the right mattress for you, we'd really urge you to take the Good Bed Quiz, which you can also find right on the homepage of our website. This will walk you through a detailed assessment of your individual needs, preferences, and priorities, and ultimately will search across both online and local options in your area to show you mattresses that we think are the best fit for your personal unique requirements. We really think it is hands down the best starting point for any mattress shopper. In the meantime, we thank you for watching and we really hope you sleep well.